how much detail does silicone actually capture? Many moons ago, I had heard from some of the silicone chemists I was working with that silicone could actually capture detail on a molecular level. And then later in my time operating a mold shop, I had some customers that told me they had in fact molded a record and played the resin copy. So I thought I'd walk down to the neighboring thrift store here and picked up this record for exactly 25 US cents and proceeded to do my own test. Now I just happened to have a new Bluetooth record player that I thought I'd check out with this. And I also had some leftover 5140 platinum silicone. So I thought I'd choose a record that was the least likely to get flagged for a copyright violation. And now we're going to see if we can reproduce Timey Kangaroo Down Sport using 5140 platinum silicone. Now, if everything goes according to the prophecy, the silicone will get down into the grooves and capture the detail of the record that actually reproduced the sound on the record player. So let's see what happens. Now, as you've seen me do many times before, I built a little uh, foam core dam around the record using some hot glue and some foam core board. It's just a great way to make quick molds like this and then seal that up with hot glue around the edge. And because this record uh, was an old record and I didn't know exactly what the condition was going to be or if this was even going to work, so uh, that's one of the reasons I chose this old record for it. So the worst case scenario is I'm out 25 cents. But I didn't want to spray any release on the record. I just wanted to release the inside of my mold box. So I did that with Zip 301 mold release, which is a non-silicone oil mold release. So it won't interfere with the curing of the silicone. And then I used a little bit of hot glue just on the inside of the record there to tack that down. Just a minimal amount just to make sure the record doesn't shift or float. And that's all I used because I didn't want to risk using any clay or any hot glue around the edge that might create a distortion uh, on the actual record. Now I happen to have a little bit of leftover 5140 platinum silicone from my old store. So I decided to mix that up to make the mold. 5140 is a Shore A40 silicone, so fairly firm. But I mainly just didn't want to use any of my newer 5130F on this, just in case it didn't work. So here I'm mixing up some 5140 1-to-1 1 -1 by weight. And I wanted to see the detail of the grooves on the record in the finished mold. And when it's poured up in just translucent silicone, that doesn't always show up really well, that really, really fine detail. So it's there, and obviously it's going to be captured on the resin part, but for the sake of the video so we can see it there, I thought I'd add some pigment to this. So to that 5140, I added a little bit of green and white silicone pigment. Now, because I'm molding a pattern, in this case a record, with incredibly fine detail, I don't want to risk even small little micro bubbles on the surface of that that might mess up that pattern. So I'm going to subject that silicone once it's mixed up to a vacuum of 29 inches of mercury. And what I'm watching for here is once it hits that full vacuum, we're watching for it to expand and then collapse. And once it gives up all those air bubbles, then it is ready to take out of the chamber and pour over our properly prepared record pattern. Now, once I pull the full vacuum on my silicone and it rises and collapses, we are ready to bleed off the vacuum on that tank, let the air back in, and remove our silicone from the vacuum chamber. You can want to do that carefully and slowly so it doesn't explode all over the inside of your chamber. And now we are ready to pour that on our level work surface. Now this is a very thin part and a overall very simple mold, but real important to make sure you're working on a level surface so that when we flip this mold over, we can fill it with resin and make sure nothing spills out of the mold because this will be a really thin mold because the record is just a little bit over an eighth inch thick. Now TC5140 has a working time of about 30 to 40 minutes at room temperature and a four hour demold at room temperature. So as soon as I get that silicone poured, I'm ready to set that aside, let it cure completely for four hours, and then break open my mold and see what we got. So here's our finished mold four hours later. And you can see from that detail when it hits the light just right, you can see those little grooves all captured. Now it just remains to be seen as to whether or not we have enough detail there to produce the sound on the original record. 
Now what I'm doing here is pouring in a very small batch of TC802 casting resin. And the reason I used the TC802 is this was the lowest viscosity resin I had in my shop. So it can easily fill in those uh, grooves and details on this record without having to pressure cast this part. So in the future I might do a little bit more involved test doing the same thing, maybe with a slower setting resin, but the TC802 was great for me as I was impatient and I wanted to see if this worked. So this is about 15 minutes later when the record had cured completely and now I'm ready to put it on the record player and see what kind of results we get. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the actual sound off the resin. So next time I'll choose a newer record that doesn't have as many scratches on it, but there you see it does in fact work. So as always, I put the material links in the video description, so be sure to check those out. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.